Welcome to our review of The Belgian Beers Race, a game that feels like it may have been specifically designed for Mo. Thanks to Green Grand Gamers Guild for working with another local game uh, gamer to help get us a cop review copy up from Gen Con. The Belgian Beer Race was designed by Mikhail Botro and features artwork from Ammo. Ammo is the official illustrator of the Cantillon and La Mule breweries in Brussels. This beer-themed board game plays two to four players, with games taking about half an hour per player, and I would say maybe a bit more than that. Uh, this game is listed for ages 14 plus, but it does have a beer theme, which may mean limiting it to adults only. So mechanically, this game's simple enough I could see even younger kids being able to play if you're not worried about that theme. The game was originally published by BYR Games, then brought to North America by Grand Gamers Guild, where you can get a copy of the game for $54.99 US. The copy of the game we received is the retail version of the game. There is also a deluxe Kickstarter edition that features upgraded components, but you won't find that in retail. Now, the Belgium Beers Race has players backpacking around Belgium and visiting its many breweries. Ride your bike, take the bus, or risk hitchhiking across the country to visit breweries, taste beers, buy beers and cheese, toast your friends, collect bottles and coasters, and accomplish objectives in this Euro Point salad. Just be sure to make it back to the Grand Palace in Brussels in time to catch your flight home and avoid, avoid huge point penalties. Now, for a look at each of the components in this beer-themed board game, check out our The Belgian Beers Race unboxing video on YouTube. So one thing you'll see right away that kind of struck me is the lack of any box insert, which just felt kind of odd. All the components are individually packaged, all the wooden one thing and all the cards shrink wrapped and everything, but everything was just kind of sliding around the box. Now that said, it didn't seem to be a problem. Nothing was actually damaged and the game does come with additional baggies, which makes it relatively easy to sort the stuff once you get it all split up and then organized. And this has been a real hit and miss topic these days and often a discussion uh, or decision of the original publisher that in this case would have been carried forwards by Grand Gamers Guild in order to avoid increasing the price point above what it could be in other regions and starting those strange little bidding wars on, e on eBay and places. <laughs> now, one thing we have mentioned multiple times on the show, really the box insert isn't there for you to use at the table. It's there to keep the game safe. And again, I will point out everything was in great shape. So it seems to have done its purpose, whether it was there or not. Now, what you do get in this game is a ton of wood. This is a wood heavy board game with beer bottles in four colors, which represent four different types of beers. You've got Trappist beers, browns, blondes, and stouts. Cubes in the same colors representing backpacked beers. Um, player components, including wooden trackers for visiting different breweries, scoring and time track markers, a cheese marker, another marker for your alcohol level, marker for your toasting and tasted beer trackers, and a very cute little hiking meeple, which was actually a stretch goal that came out in all copies instead of your standard meeple. You also get punch boards with coaster tokens, visited brewery tokens, and 50-point bottle caps, thin, single-layered player uh, board with a huge six-panel main board, three custom D6s that used when moving around the board, and a deck of various objective cards. Now, in addition to pretty clear rule book, you also get a rather thick beer guide with information on each of the breweries in the game. This in the center of it also includes a checklist and tasting sheet that you could theoretically take with you on an actual trip to Belgium. Now, one thing we did appreciate is that the publisher took the time to choose red, green, colorblind, friendly colors for these components. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you have an idea of what you will be getting, let's move on to an overview of play. So start a game of Belgium beers race by seeding the board with randomly drawn coaster tiles and place an appropriately colored beer bottle onto every brewery, including the ones that got coasters. The objective cards are sh sorted and shuffled. The level one objective deck is placed on the board face up and seven are drawn. Four of these will be available to be claimed, while four will show objectives that can be claimed later. The level two objectives are put to the side for now and a set number of level three objectives based on the player count are drawn and placed on the board. These are the end game scoring opportunities. Now players take a player board and all the wooden components in their color, as well as a piece of cheese. These are placed onto their player boards and main board as instructed in the rulebook. 
These are going to track all kinds of different things throughout the game, like your alcohol level, the number of beers you've tasted, and so on. Your Hitchhiker Meeple is placed on the board in the Grand Palace in Brussels. A game of the Belgian's Beers Race is played over three days and two nights and uses a time track system to organize play. At the start of the game, everyone begins in the Grand Palace and everyone must try to end their trip back there on day three. Every action in the game takes a set number of time units, and you only have so much time each day to accomplish things, with more time on the second day than the first and third, which represents getting into Brussels and having to catch your flight out. Now, the player who's furthest back on the time track is the active player that turn and will continue to take actions until they become the first player on the track. Then the player now furthest back on the track will take actions until they're first and so on. This is going to continue until you hit the end of the track for that day. Note, this is quite different from other time track games we played in the past, so be aware of that. Uh, we will note that I played wrong the first time, thinking it was just like the others. Now, actions you can take on your turn include traveling and arriving at a brewery, tasting a beer, buying beer and or cheese, and camping for the night. There are three ways to travel. Riding a bike is the safest and most reliable. It generally takes longer than the other two methods, but guarantees you don't waste more time than you were planning on. Mm -hmm. Also, once you've had enough to drink, you can't ride that bike anymore. Before that point, though, taking a long ride can sober you up. You drop one point on the alcohol track for every four time units in a row that you bike. Your next option is to take the bus. The problem with this is that there's a one in six chance the bus will run late and the trip will cost you two extra time units. Now, on a positive note, in Belgium, you can drink on the bus. So for every time unit you spend on a bus, including possibly that extra waiting time, you can drink a beer from your backpack, which increases your beer's tasted track and your alcohol track. Uh, the final most risky but potentially quickest option is to hitchhike. Here, you roll the dice and have a 50% chance to be picked up. If you aren't picked up, you lose two time units. You can then try again and roll an additional die, with failure costing you another two time units. If you still haven't been picked up, you can continue to try with three dice, with each failure costing you two more time units. When hitchhiking, you can avoid this randomness by offering your ride beer. If you pay two beers per time unit required, you get to travel without rolling the dice. No, we forgot this rule the first play, and it makes a big difference. Oh, yes. Now, once you've figured out your method of travel and spent your appropriate time units, you arrive at a beer brewery. If there's a beer bottle there, you get to take it. That represents a collectible you've picked up, some glassware or an actual beer bottle. If not, and there's a coaster there, you get to take that. Now, if the brewery you arrived at is one of the special breweries, you get to raise your trackers on your player board accordingly. Now, there are a number of these special breweries on the map. These include the world-famous Trappist Breweries, the designer's favorite breweries, fan-favorite breweries, which were voted on during the Kickstarter, and a brewery at each of the th four compass points. If another player is at a brewery you just, that you just arrived at and you both have beer in your backpacks, you must toast each other. You give each other a beer cube and raise the following tracks, your alcohol level, beers tasted track, and toast track, and each spend one time unit. Now, different breweries are out different actions, each of which cost one time unit. Most will let you taste beers. Others will let you buy beers and cheese, and there's even a couple where all you can do is visit them. Tasting beers ups your tasted beer track and your alcohol track. Buying beers gives you three beer cubes to put in your backpack, and buying cheese has you put your cheese counter up by one. Now, cheese is worth points at the end of the game, but you can also eat it at any time. Every time you eat a cheese, you decrease your cheese track by one and increase your sobriety by one. Now, watching your sobriety is a key part of this game. Once you drink, drink enough beers, you won't be able to bike anywhere anymore. A couple of beers after that, taking the bus takes twice as long, and the penalty for failed hitchhiking doubles. Drink a couple more beers, and you will pass out losing out on the rest of your actions for that day. Now, the last action you can take is to camp for the night. You lay your black packer meeple on its side and can then spend time units drinking beers you've saved up in your backpack on a one-to-one -one basis. On your turn, you can also collect objectives. 
the four objectives located on the right, full bottle side of the track, are up for grabs. These include goals like buying or tasting beer at specific breweries, having specific types of beer in your backpack, having a set number of beer bottles or coasters, um, and other things. Claimed objectives are, paced, are placed on your player board face down. Mm -hmm. At the end of your turn, replenish any chosen objectives by sliding them to the right and filling open spots from the deck. Now, on the time track, there are three bottle tokens. The first player to pass one of these can break the bottle and remove an available objective from play. Now, if they choose not to, the next person that passes gets the same option until the bottle's broken or everyone has passed it. Once all players have reached the end of the time track or are camping, the day ends. At the end of day one, the remaining level one objectives are shuffled into the level two objectives and the new deck is placed on the board. Players then score points. So on a night phase, points are awarded for beers tasted and beer bottles and coasters collected. No, that means on day one, day two and day three, you're going to score them multiple times. So it's something you want to get up and early and get lots of at the beginning of the game because they just kind of accumulate as the game goes on. Then the time track is reset. The order of the player tokens is flipped and put back to the start. Then players who drank too much will take a slept in penalty based on how drunk they were the night before. Then everyone's alcohol level drops by four. Note not to the bottom of the track. The game then continues for day two, which plays identically to day one, except for the fact that the players now have more time and there are now level two objectives that will come up in the mix. At the end of day two, players again get points for their beers tasted and beer bottles and coasters collected. Day three is another short day. No new objectives are added, and by the end of this day, players want to be at the Grand Palace in Brussels. Now, once everyone's reached the end of the time track on the third day, you calculate everyone's final score. Here, you're going to get points for the standard things of tasted beers, bottles, and coasters, but you're also going to score your bonus brewery tracks, one point for every beer in your backpack, the amount of cheese you've saved up, the total number of different breweries you visited, the cheese, uh, the objective cards you've collected during the game, and if you qualify for any of the level three objectives. What's interesting here is some of these actually award negative points. For example, if you never partake in a toast, your score on the toast track will be showing negative five points. Similarly, you lose two points if you never visit a Trappist brewery. If you did not make it to the Grand Palace before reaching the end of the time track, you are penalized 15 points per travel action required to get there. That's big. The player with the most points wins, with a tie being broken by the player who got to the Grand Palace first. Now, in addition to these core rules, the game also includes a shorter version. There are no level 3 objectives. Level 2 objectives are only used if the level 1 deck runs out. Players get to pick where they start off at the beginning of the game, and you only play two 24-hour time slots with one mid-game scoring opportunity. So let's move on to some of our thoughts on the Belgian beers race. So when I first heard this game existed, I was like, there is a game for me. I need to get a copy of this. As Sean noted at the top of this review, it's like this game was made for me. My two biggest hobbies are board gaming and craft beer. I was sold on this game before ever sitting down to play it. Honestly, it could have been terrible. It could have been one of the worst games I've ever played, and I still would have appreciated owning it. I, I, and appreciate the fact this exists. I wanted it on my shelf so that I have a Belgian beer drinking board game. Luckily, though, the game is not at all terrible, and it is actually quite good. It is a rather thematic game that has a great flow once you get the rules down. On the other side, I am not a drinker. While I can and do from time to time enjoy a beverage, you'll never find me raiding or collecting beers. I couldn't tell you if I like an IPA more than a Pilsner. That said, the game still worked for me. Mm -hmm. The feel of travel in a foreign land and a level of tension in the time mechanic, along with collecting and a bit of competition with friends, just felt good. Now, what I like most about the Belgian beers race is the way the theme is integrated with the mechanics, the way they're tied together. Because what you do in this game feels like what you'd be doing if you really were backpacking across Belgium. This integration makes onboarding and teaching new players relatively easy. And remembering the rules also just takes, there's retention there, even if weeks go in between games, just because the concepts in the game just make sense. While some of the concepts may seem a little obscure to North Americans, uh, hitchhiking and drinking on the bus are real aspects of traveling in Belgium. 
And even the scoring in this game makes sense, right? You want to hit as many different breweries as you can, but you also want to make sure to visit some specific noteworthy ones. You want to watch for promotions and collect bottles and coasters before they run out because there's only so many at each brewery. You're in Belgium, and if you don't hit at least one Trappist brewery and you don't meet up with friends at least once for a toast, you're doing it wrong. Now, while I personally, especially nowadays, would treat a, tr a trip to Belgium very differently, as I'd probably want to go check out Deshore and try to get backstage at Tomorrowland, I can also see 20 years ago <laughs> doing some beer tours. Now, the objectives add to this by having you want to try different beers or take different actions at the breweries you visit, which also makes the game more replayable because they're going to change up every game, both the order they come up and which ones are going to come up during the game. The random coaster distribution also helps with this, as in one game, one brewery might have enough coasters for everyone, where in another one, there may not be enough and everyone's racing to get there before they're out, and one of the breweries that was important last game may not matter at all this time. This means that even if you're not into the theme deeply, you can still appreciate the game behind it and know that each play will be different enough that you can't walk in with a preset plan to win. Now, mechanically, the, the shining highlight of this game is the time track system. For one, it's also thematic, each time unit being half an hour. Stopping for beer and loading up your pack, half an hour. Doing a tasting, half an hour. Miss the bus, ooh, you just lost an hour, and so on. Second, I like the way the active player continues to keep playing until they're in first. This is quite a change from other games. Now, while I agree, I love the track. The half hour aspect was a bit tricky. When you see one time unit, most people default by nature to one hour or one minute. And actually referring it to it as a half an hour became a little problematic. Uh, ignoring how long it represents and just calling it one time or one time unit uh, worked better for me and avoided the confusion when people inevitably call it one hour when they actually mean one half hour or one unit. Which is fair. Now, as for this time track, you've got to realize how different this is. So other games, for example, use time tracks that I really enjoy are Takedo or, say, Glenn Moore. When those games, once you pass anyone, it's now their turn to go because they're in last. Whereas in this game, you end up doing a lot more on your turn I've got to say feels more rewarding. It feels like you're accomplishing more on your turn. Though really, if you just went around the table, you'd still do the same things. It just wouldn't feel as much. It also feels kind of thematic too, especially if you get one of the long routes. If you take a long bus ride, you're going to end up way further on the time track and basically have to sit back and wait while everyone else catches up, which just kind of gives that thematic note of I'm on the bus for a long damn time. The one detriment to this is, as with many Euro games, there isn't a lot of player interaction, so it can be tempting, especially if you've just opened up a wide lead on the time track after your turn, to pick up your phone or otherwise get distracted while everyone else plays catch up, only needing to react if someone happens to land on the spot you're in. Yeah, most of the player interaction here is about grabbing things before other players, which doesn't really fit, integrate with the time track system at all. So again, I say it's pretty thematic to want to pull out your phone while you're wasting time on a bus ride. <laughs> now, while some player, what some players may not like about this game, because um, it's it's a pretty pure Euro otherwise, is the randomness involved in the travel system. While it is possible to play this game biking everywhere, never having to roll a set of dice, perhaps even just saving up beers for you always pay for hitchhiking, I don't think you could do this and end up with a winnable score. I'll admit we haven't tried it, but I don't think it's possible. You just won't hit enough different locations for this to pan out. So at some point, you're going to have to roll the bones, and the winner in this game can be determined based on good or bad die rolls. Now, thankfully, the game does present ways to avoid the dice. Like I said again, specifically the beer bribe rule, as we call it. Do not miss the fact that you can pay in beer to avoid rolling with hitchhiking. We missed this rule the first couple plays, and it made for a longer, more frustrating game. So take advantage of that rule when you can because the dice, sooner or later, will turn on you. I speak from experience. This can, unfortunately, if you haven't allowed for it, make for a major swing in the final score, even if your rolls only turn bad at that last roll of the game. Yep. Yeah, there is definitely a push-your-luck aspect to getting to Belgium, or there can be. You can play it safe, but then it's always that chance to try to get one more beer in before you get to the end. Now, another aspect I do like about the Belgian beers race is the fact it's a point salad. 
there are lots of different ways to score points, and so far I've yet to see a specific winning strategy that's better than others. Except for the fact I have noticed that if you don't try a lot of beers, if you don't taste a lot of beers, you tend to not be able to win. But come on, thematically, that's got to be one of your goals in the Belgian beer rates that taste beers. As for the other stuff, you're going to get points for drinking beer. You're going to get points for collecting bottles and coasters, for toasting, for hoarding cheese, for visiting specific breweries, for the number of breweries you can get to, and all those random objectives. Like in one game, I saw one player make it a personal goal to hit all the special breweries. In another, I saw a player try to leave Brussels with a full backpack of beers. 24 beers, it's got to be a heavy backpack. And in a third game, I saw a player try to stay as sober as possible throughout the game. All of these personal play styles seem to work and seem to be encouraged by the game. Now, and as a point salad, with some point games from achievements hidden during the play, trying to work out if you have the lead or not is nigh impossible. Mm -hmm. Do they have 10, 20, 15 uh, cards, 15 points, or 35 points in achievements? Unless you're counting every card as someone achieves them, you really have to play your best game and just hope it was better than the others. Yeah, there is a, there is a full discussion we could have on open scoring and closed scoring. And personally, I like this type. So you don't always know who the leader is. That's a lot of positive. So on the negative side of things, I do want to point out a few things. And, and the biggest one is the graphic design. This leaves um, quite a bit to be desired. I totally get it. They got a famous Belgian beer label maker to do the artwork. And yes, that does give a certain aesthetic to the game, but I found that that design can hinder gameplay. The biggest problem is the board itself. It is just busy. It is a very busy board. It is overwhelming and it scares people away. If I threw this game out at a public play event with casual gamers, they are going to not gravitate to this game, uh, especially because the Belgian label style isn't really something we see here. So it's not like someone's going to be in the corner going, oh, those look like beer labels. It's just going to look busy and overwhelming. Another another issue is that busy style doesn't con isn't conducive to the lighting in many yes. locations. That's true, too. Like, you got to think about it. Every route between every brewery has three different icons on it for the three transportation modes. And each brewery is presented as this like poker chip looking circle that's trying to fit way too much information in that small circle because you've got the brewery number kind of enlarged in the middle, but that gets covered up almost instantly. Then you've got two smaller brewery numbers, one facing each end of the board. Then you've got the type of brewery based on the color, which also sometimes gets covered up. Um, then if you can or can't buy beer there, if you can or can't taste beer there, and then any special brewery symbols like the tap Trappists are octagons and the hearts are fan favorites. It can actually be hard to see across the table. And every game I played with every playing group has had someone have to ask, hey, can I drink beer there or can I do that? Or is that number 13 or 18? Yeah, in good lighting with young, healthy eyes, this probably isn't that big of a deal. But both lighting and healthy eyes can be in short supply these days. <laughs> so, assuming your intricate and beautiful, highly detailed design will be readable, was a bit of a stretch on this one. Now, another annoyance uh, for me came in the form of the visited brewery tokens. These are super tiny. These are some of the smallest tokens we've ever seen um, since Disney sidekicks. Not only am I worried about losing them because you need to have all of these to play the game. There's no real good place to put them on the board. As noted, the brewery information is already hard enough to see without everyone trying to toss tokens by in on top of it. And the fear of losing these is actually what keeps me from bringing this game out to public play events. Yeah, if it weren't for these tokens, which are an important aspect of the game, you can't just leave them off. It would be a fantastic game to bring out to events, but because of them, it's unworkable as a game to bring out, especially in a slightly dark venue if one goes flying. Now, my final complaint about the Belgian beers race is the player board. These are very thin and slippery, and you track a lot of things on them. You've got a toast track. You've got a cheese track. You've got a taste of beers track. You've got five tracks for special breweries. You've got all your beer cubes in your backpack. You've got your sobriety level. If this board gets bumped or your table gets bumped, that's potentially a lot of track important information that can be lost. Yeah. And I noticed that with the lack of dual layer player boards to keep the tokens in place, it would have actually been more effective to use flat cardboard tokens and a mm -hmm. slightly less glossy player board 
to keep things from getting disturbed. This wouldn't have obviously helped with the theming, but it certainly would have made it less likely to send things flying. Yeah, I agree. So overall, I really dig this game, but I I have to admit, I was predisposed to like this. This this falls at the intersection of two of my biggest hobbies, right? Like it, it's it's a perfect hit here. The real question here, though, for anyone listening or reading is um, if non-beer fans would enjoy this game. And I've got to say, based on the players I played with, which is two different groups, I'd say yes, definitely. While the majority of people I play with played the Belgian beers right with are beer fans, none of them are really into beers and brewing and tastings and rating beers as much as I am. And only one other person that I played with even knows what a Trappist beer is. So, of course, I did have to educate the other players while we were playing how important those red beers were. More importantly, though, I've also played the game with a couple of non-drinkers, including Sean, and they also enjoyed the game. To them, this was a solid travel game, as much about backpacking and getting around as it is about actually the beers. Everyone I played this with has loved the time track system and the player interaction involved. Whether this played out through grabbing a beer bottle to glassware or glassware before another player, getting that last um, coaster before someone else got there, being the first to get to all the Trappists, or grabbing an objective before someone else claimed it, or using that bottle to smash someone just before getting it, and the ever-popular toasting someone when they had better plans. In many ways, this game can be quite familiar to many non-drinkers. It's not unlike going out and hanging out with your beer connoisseur friends and enjoying (laughs) dabbling in a bit of what they love while finding your own take on the activities to enjoy Uh, that there's a lot of other uh, those other activities to enjoy in this game, uh, even if it is primarily about the alcohol. Now, another aspect people have a lot of fun with, and that is the tension on that third day and even trying to squeeze things in on the second day. But just that trying to make your flight at the end of the game, the final part of the Belgian's beer race, while everyone is trying to get back to the Grand Palace before running out of time has always been tense. There's always a player who who plays it safe, who gets there way ahead of time and maybe hits a couple last breweries in Brussels and it's like, I'm good, I'm good. And they basically end their game while everyone else is tension. But there's always one or two players who trying to squeeze in one last tasting, one last shopping trip, One more beer on the bus before I have to get on the plane, and that's always enjoyable. And as someone who got burned, not by cutting it close, but by the dice, I may be a bit less in favor of this game's ending. But the dice are part of the game throughout, and simply something that needs to be allowed for. And you never have to rely on the dice. You can push your luck. Now, one of the best interactions I've actually had in this game ever was meeting up with another player just outside Brussels and forcing them to do a toast, which meant they missed their bus and thus the final flight, while I, more sober, still had plenty of time to bike to the palace. While there is little player interaction in this game, there is enough where that one act of sharing a drink with friends can ruin well-laid plans. If you're a bear fan who knows why Belgian beers are considered some of the best beers in the world, and you know how rare a true Trappist beer is and how rare they're becoming, and you play board games, which I assume you must or you wouldn't be listening right now, you should pick up a copy of the Belgian Beers Race. You're going to love it for the theme alone, and you'll get a kick out of the beer guide that comes inside. Even if you can't convince your friends to play it that often, it's just a cool game to own and have on your shelf. Look, I have a game about Belgian beers. Isn't that cool? The thing is, though, this is actually a good game, one of the best time track games I've played. So with the theme of travel and hiking around Belgium sounds fun to you, whether you actually care about Belgian beer or not, there's a lot to like in this game. Yeah, well, because of the theme, it's not a game I'm likely to ask to play all that often. It is certainly a fun game that I wouldn't ever turn down playing Mm -hmm. if offered. Uh, It really did have enough solid Euro game in there, even for the non-drinkers. Now, one thing I do want to point out, this is not a super simple game. It's a game about beer. This is not a drinking game or a party game. This is a medium weight Euro with all the complexity that goes with that. So this is not a game to pick up for your drinking buddies or your aunt who likes to try new beers now and then, but isn't a board gamer. While casual drinking may be encouraged by the game, this is not a casual game. And to be clear, we do not in any way support or recommend casual drinking. Please consult your local laws for drinking ages, learn your limit, consume within it. 
Now, you're also going to want to avoid this if you don't want or allow alcohol references at your table for whatever reason. You don't want to knock someone off the wagon because you played a beer-themed board game with them, and getting pass out drunk is probably not a good gaming topic for playing with little kids. Though at the same time, getting pass out drunk is not shown as being a good thing in this game. As you become more inebriated, you're able to function less, and eventually you lose the rest of your day. Not an invaluable lesson on drinking. Personally, my only regret about this game is that I missed out on the Kickstarter and didn't get the Deluxe Edition. I would have loved the dual layer player boards, the three mini expansions, the actual bottle caps for 50 point uh, scoring and other upgrades. That said, you wouldn't have gotten anything better for tracking what breweries you'd been to. So the component flaws that we discussed weren't addressed by the Kickstarter version. So they kind of were in a way because the deluxe edition does give you player aids, which I still find it's wrong that a player aid should be a stretch goal. Give us player aids. Well, these player aids list every brewery, what you can do at every brewery with a checkbox next to them. Well, you probably don't want to write on your player aids. You could make copies of these. And I wonder if this might be a better way to track where everyone's been. With how much my regular game group and I are enjoying the game, what I would love to see actually with this is other beer race games from the same publisher. Like I would love to play through the German beers race, starting and ending in Munich and including the five Seda Club, or maybe even expand the theme a little bit and do the Spanish wine race, including the Santiago de Compostela pilgrimage. Um, yeah, I don't know. That might be a bit much for me. <laughs> Uh, hey, maybe if I can take in the running of the bulls while you're drinking beers, I think we might. There you go. Think. Well, that's it for our review of the Belgian beers race. Remember, if you do drink while playing this game or otherwise, drink responsibly. Thank you for joining us. Before you go, it'd be awesome if you would retweet, share, like, subscribe, follow, thumbs up, whatever it is you do to say thanks to content creators for the content you just consumed. And also, when you have time, check out my written review of the Belgian Beers Race at TabletopBellhop.com. 